Is there any more comment? Mark? It's um, Tuesday, February 15th, um, 2011. This is the Story County Commission meeting. Um, for the record, um, I'm Mark Joseph Phillips. And I'm, I'm speaking now in regards to the discussable discussion possible action of the appointment of James Miller as a Justice of the Peace pro tempore per NRS 4.032. Most important thing, I read and, and I reviewed it before the meeting today and I'm a little disappointed in um, Mr. McGuffey's interpretation of the law. <coughs> this this um, Justice of the Peace pro tempore is not a way to make take somebody off the street and make them a judge. This is a list of justices that are justices already that the county may, may keep. You know, it's just, um, it's just not right to talk about this as a way to get a, get a list, of, list of people who are not already judges. Let me go through the most important things. Justice of the peace can make arrests without warrants. JP can give oaths. Justice of the Peace can be notary publics. They can sign search warrants, arrest warrants. Most important of all, after the last meeting, I, I found out our uh, Judge McGuffey was operating without a bond as required by law, and we'll talk about that later. And one of the most important things that I was going to bring up at the last meeting is that the, the judge school shall be paid by the county. So if, if um, Judge McGuffey's at school and, and somebody's <laughs> filling in, they need to be in school too or, or already be a former justice. Um, I'm looking for a motion and hoping for a second to um, continue this discussion till later, till, um, till the list is larger and, um, and um, Jim Miller's not the only candidate on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any other public comment? Not. Do we have a motion? Well, the one thing I'd like to consider just a little bit is on, on Jack's deal here. You can have as many pro tempores as you as you probably like, and if Jack wanted to open up to more than Jim Miller than than he obviously could. And I'm in favor of, of Jim Miller being the judge pro tempore. I think he's a great candidate. However, on, on Jack's deal here is what I'd like to see if we're going to follow kind of your lead on this, Jack, which is to still have candidates be subjected to the same application process of the four-person panel as we did with yourself and I believe the seven others. <clears throat> I think of nothing else if, you know, if anybody wants to apply for um, the pro tempore, they, they sure can, but he's going to be the decision maker. We'll probably approve what he has to say, I would imagine. But on one of the deals here, it does say you would like to have the candidate subject to that possible application process. I'm in favor of that. I think that I think that shows good good faith yeah, on everything that we're doing up here. So with that, uh, I would make a suggestion, or I'll even make this a motion, um, that at this time we continue this until whatever applications you deem necessary. We're not telling you you have to appoint anybody that you don't like, because we're not here to do that. But they should be screened, at least the same process that was given to the Justice of the Peace application. So I would suggest that that is done. I don't know if we can do that in enough time for the next meeting. I don't know what the, uh, if we're in a hurry for this. Um, if not, you know, we can, although we do have budgets coming up. But that would be my recommendation on that and my <coughs> uh, motion. Well, I like Jim. I'm not saying Jim's not the best guy or one of the best, but I just think we should follow through with the same application process that was afforded to the Justice of the Peace originally. So I will make that a motion. All right. And I have a couple of comments. I've known Jim Miller for probably over a quarter of a century, and I find his background as a law enforcement officer is uh, not one of his more outstanding qualifications to be a judge pro tem. I know a lot of judges and district attorneys around this state 
and I can name quite a few of them that have backgrounds in law enforcement. So I think that uh, of uh, uh, in consideration of uh, appointing him, that, that he is an outstanding applicant uh, for the position of Judge Pro Tem. And with that, I'll second uh, Commissioner Hess's motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may yes. add a comment. Um, as staff, staff set the criteria and the process for uh, how we handled the seven candidates for the Justice of the Peace. Uh, I'd ask for some discretion uh, from you folks if you do approve this, only to the extent that uh, when we set the process, we set it with Judge Daniels and primarily myself, uh, but also with help from uh, Holly Keechler. And there will need to be probably a few variables of that, for instance, for a pro tem position. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get Judge Russell's time. He spent an awful lot of time out of a very busy schedule. Um, there are some other things, such as the essay, that I would like to work directly with Judge McGuffey to say, is an essay really necessary in this process? So I, I know we can commit to certain processes, definitely an application, uh, definitely a resume, that's standard processing for us, uh, a background check, those those types of things, but if we can have a little latitude in, uh, in adjusting the nature of the screening, that would, uh, that would help us. I think that would be left up to probably yourself and uh, Mr. McGuffey. Great. That's, that's what I would ask. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you, everybody, for coming.